Right, Social Security Agency workers and the Social Development Minister returned to the Labour Court today. Minister Suzanne Chabangu's application to stop the workers' strike was uh, yesterday rolled over to today. Salsa workers affiliated to Public Servants Association down tools on Monday demanding increased pay. Minister Chabangu says their anger is misdirected as Sasa doesn't determine their salary. She's also worried that the strike will cripple the agency's capacity to conduct payouts. But the workers say that the minister has left them with no choice but to down tools. They're vowing to intensify their action should the, call, uh, the court uh, rule in their favor. PSA wants a 12% wage hike despite a 7% wage increase agreement signed by other public sector unions last month. All right, then uh, joining us in studio this morning uh, with, uh, for more information on this, we have the Deputy uh, General Manager of Public Servants Association, uh, Tahir Mayapa. And then also uh, joining us via Skype is uh, Labor Analyst uh, Terry Bell. Let me begin with you, and uh, thanks very much, gentlemen, for uh, joining us. But let's start with you, Tahir Mayapa. Thank you for coming through to the show. You're back in court uh, today, this morning. Um, take us through what happened uh, yesterday and uh, really what what, what you're anticipating for today. You've said that if it's not in your favor, you're intensifying your strike action. Yes, uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, basically, yesterday what happened is that the, the, the court had a slow start uh, because the minister filed her uh, supporting affidavit very late. In fact, it came whilst we were in court. Yeah. Uh, and the, the only reason why she did that, it was because in our court papers, we raised the fact that the minister didn't affirm the affidavit of the acting CEO. But the essence of the court case is based on the issue of agent. They went on an agent basis. And the law or the court rule says that when you, are, you, you approach the court on an agent basis, the first thing that you must prove is agency. Now, we gave Sasa the, the notice of a strike action on the 7th of June, and they only approached the court last week, Friday. Uh -huh. Now, the issue of agency is out of the window. But the issue of agency could be related to the fact that this is now affecting uh, the, the, a, a lot of people in, in South Africa. So the fact of agency might not be in terms of when you guys told them that uh, you would be doing the strike action, but in terms of how it now, at this point, would affect the South Africans. Isn't that correct? No, no, is no, there, no. When was that their argument? What was well, the argument? Well, well that, that argument will not hold water because the moment I tell you that I'm going on strike on the 8th, mm. How would you know whether the strike will be effective or not? You need to act immediately. Your worry must be immediate that if these people go on strike, they know that the, PSE, the PSA is the outright majority at SASA. We, we have over almost 6,000 members. They know that our strike would have been impactful in any case. Yeah. But the other thing that they knew is the fact that the PSA said to the minister, we said to her, you know what, we don't want to affect our people negatively. We don't want this thing to happen. All that you have to do, come back to the bargaining forum so that we can negotiate salaries. In the meantime, we are only going to go on uh, lunchtime pickets. That is why they were lax, because of they knew that lunchtime pickets have no e uh, effectiveness. But the reason why we did that, it was considering the circumstances that we find ourselves in. But when our members realized that the minister is not coming to the party, they then decided that we are going to down tools uh, completely. And that is why they went to the court. Okay. But that could not be proven as agent. The judge made it very clear that this thing is not agent. All right, Tahir, take us through, uh, you know, what you really actually want. Um, I know that uh, PSA wants a 12% wage hike, um, despite a 7% wage increase agreement yes. uh, that was actually uh, signed by other public sector unions last month. Why are you not in, in, in agreement and what are actually now your biggest uh, gripes, I suppose one can say? Yeah. Well, our biggest gripe is our right to collective bargaining. That is the first thing. Sasa is saying that we don't have a right to collectively bargain in Sasa, which is that fundamentally flawed because the constitution of the country is very clear. The second fallacy that they have is that that agreement that was signed by COSAT unions and the state is applicable to Sasa. In terms of what? Sasa is an agency of government. It's not part of government. The scope of PSAPs is very clear, and Sasa is excluded. Sasa is like SARS and many other parastatals. So their negotiations happen privately. That is why our disputes, they don't go to the PSABC, they go to the CCMA. So that is the, f the first thing that we have a gripe with, okay. the right to collectively bargain. The second part is that we can't even uh, present our demands because nobody wants to receive our demands.
So that aspect is the, 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 the main thing, and th that is what we said to the minister. We said to the minister, if tomorrow you can say to PSA, let's go to the bargaining forum, we'll call off the strike immediately. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to call off the strike today if she says we must go to the bargaining forum. But she doesn't want to go come to the bargaining forum. And where does she get the, uh, 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 this reasoning that the agreement that was signed with uh, the other unions is applicable to us? She could not show any legislation, she could not show any resolution or any document that says that that agreement is applicable to us. All right, well, let's call in uh, Mr. Terry Bell then. Uh, he's joining us uh, via Skype. Okay, I understand that we've got a problem then uh, with uh, with the line at the moment, but uh, we'll try to get hold of him. Terry Bell is a labor analyst whom we also actually uh, want to bring into uh, this conversation. Let's continue uh, then, uh, Tahir. The, the minister, you know, you, you've said that uh, uh, she has no basis and uh, that she must just go to the bar uh, bargaining forum and uh, discuss uh, these issues with you, and then you would uh, call off the strike. Why is there no basis to uh, the minister's statement where she says that your anger uh, as PSA is, is, is mis misdirected, really, and that uh, Sasa won't uh, determine uh, salaries anyway. So, in other words, she's saying that regardless of you wanting her to come to the bargaining forum, there's nothing for her to bargain there. What, what, what would you then say to that? You see, again, it's, it's again uh, the minister being very disingenuous. Yeah. No way in her court papers does she even allege that the PSA is wrong with this. Mm. She says that previously we adopted that agreement. But where did we adopt the, the, the previous agreement? We went to the bargaining council and we said this agreement is in, in the interest of, of, of our members. The mem our members are happy about it. And we signed a collective agreement. We have never adopted an agreement from another institution. Mm. So whatever that she's saying is not based on anything. And if there was any basis, she would have put it in her paper set court to say that PSA is breaking the law. The law says that agreement is applicable to us. But that's not what she's saying. She's saying it to you guys, she's saying it to the public, but in her own court papers, she's not saying it. Is there any other way uh, for PSA to make their uh, demands, um, uh, you know, to, to, to their demands heard uh, uh, other than this? Because, I mean, the minister has also raised the issue that this might uh, cripple the agency's capacity to conduct uh, payouts. And you've said you don't want to do this. Uh, you don't want to cripple pay, payouts to, to the vulnerable people of our society. Is there no other way uh, uh, for you to, to express your, your grievances with, with the minister, with Sasa? Is there no other way? Well, unfortunately, there's no other way. We can't even take the minister to court to come to the negotiation table. She must do it voluntarily. So the, the, the ball is in her court. It is her who's got the power to say that, you know what, I don't want to affect our people negatively. And she's got a constitutional obligation, and she's quite correct. But all that she has to do is to instruct the CEO of uh, Sasa to come to the bargaining table. And this issue is resolved. Mm. That's her word is enough for us to resolve this. You don't matter. see it as, as, as PSA, as you guys holding us hostage, as the people of, of uh, South Africa? You know, it's either the minister behaves in this way or you will suffer the, the, reper the, the, the repercussions. Well, that is not the attitude of the PSA. Mm. Uh, when we, we, we decided to go on this, on this strike, it was a hard decision. It was not an easy decision. But unfortunately, what does the law say? The law says in collective bargaining, if the employer doesn't want to collective, uh, collectively bargain. The only thing that you can do is to go on strike. Yes. So that is the law. That's what we are bound by. If we had other options, we could have explored those options. Yeah. But unfortunately, we are between a rock and the minister. All right. Uh, Mr. Tahir Mayepa, Deputy General Manager of uh, Public Servants Association, PSA. Uh, thank you so very much for your time. And for